Now, if you're planning to watch the eclipse on Monday, astronomers are warning you to be careful because there are bogus safety glasses on the market. David Zura explains how you can tell the real from the fake. Let's see if we can. I'm curious if these lights will show up and put it right in front of that mm -hmm. lens there. The only things you should be able to see through your solar eclipse viewing glasses are the sun, sunlight being reflected by shiny surfaces, or perhaps your brightest incandescent bulbs at home, and not much else. This warning after a number of fake viewing glasses have been popping up online or in shops across North America, including the GTA, Kingston and Quebec. You really want to make sure that they are actually um, true certified um, solar viewers. And the main way that we're encouraging people to do that is to go to the American Astronomical Society they have a list of safe certified solar viewer vendors. The Royal Astronomical Society of Canada saying when you put them on, it should be like putting on a blindfold. You really shouldn't see anything in front of you. You shouldn't see your hand. You shouldn't see cars going by. Oh yeah, I can just, just, see just make out the, that there's something. Now these glasses we just demonstrated are ISO certified. We reached the manufacturer, a company called Rainbow Symphony in Los Angeles. The company's president telling us while they aren't particularly hard to manufacture, when there's a large bump in demand, other companies may be tempted to take a crack at it and end up producing and selling a similar looking but substandard product. So there's maybe a five or six step process. Like I say, you have to have the right paper, the right glues, the ISO certified materials. And a lot of, this, a lot of the things are proprietary along the way. Like the glues are very special. The, the, the material that, that uh, the, the filter material that goes in the eyes is very special. Meanwhile, Ralph Chu, Professor Emeritus of Optometry and Vision Science at the University of Waterloo, is the lead writer for the ISO standard that governs these glasses. He explains to properly protect vision, the amount of light that they must filter is extraordinary. What we want to do is uh, reduce the amount of light uh, that is getting through the filter by a factor of 200,000 times. So you're looking at a transmission of uh, about 0.0003%. He agrees testing them first is a good idea and adds the back of the glasses should look something like this. Lots of information. If it seems a little sparse, that's probably not a good sign. For City News, I'm David Zura.